that's how Discovery steers its way in orbit. T minus three minutes and counting. Top of the liquid, top of the external fuel tank, known as the beanie cap, being removed at this time. CLT, constant warning memory clear is complete with no unexpected errors. Copy. Discovery, close and launch your visors and initiate O2 flow. Discovery and work. T minus one minute, 58 seconds and counting. CLS is go for ET LH2 pressurization. T-minus one minute, 30 seconds to launch. Everything remains on track. T-minus one minute and counting to the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery. T-minus 50 seconds. Transferring the shuttle's internal power now. It's running on its onboard three fuel cells. Coming up on go for auto sequence start. The computers on board Discovery control the spacecraft. Let's go for auto sequence start. 25. T minus 25 seconds and counting. 20. T minus 15 seconds and counting. 10. 10 seconds. We have go for main engine start. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Booster ignition and liftoff of Shuttle Discovery. Combate Kudasai. Best of luck to the International Space Station's newest laboratory. Houston and Discovery, roll program. Roger, roll, Discovery. Houston now controlling the flight of Discovery, a man-made rising sun on behalf of Japan. Discovery on the proper alignment, heads down, wings level for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Space Station. Six seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back to 72% of rated performance, going in the bucket, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it goes supersonic. Discovery already five miles in altitude, eight and a half miles downrange, traveling almost a thousand miles an hour. Discovery Houston, go at throttle up. Throttle up. throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Mark Kelly, joined on the flight deck by pilot Ken Ham, flight engineer Ron Garan, and mission specialist Karen Nyberg. Down on the mid deck are Mike Fossum, Aki Hoshide, and Greg Shamatov, heading for a half year on the International Space Station.
One minute, 45 seconds into the flight. Discovery 22 miles in altitude, 23 miles downrange. Standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer confirms staging, a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. The onboard computer steering the shuttle for the on-ramp to the highway for the International Space Station. Discovery 37 miles in altitude, 50 miles downrange, traveling 3,200 miles an hour. The orbital maneuvering system engines have ignited, providing Discovery with a burst of power for the next 2 minutes 15 seconds. Roger, two engine morale. That call from Mark Kelly, the first of a series of performance calls in the event of the loss of a main engine. However, all three main engines continue to perform normally, along with the auxiliary power units and the three power-producing fuel cells. Discovery flying on the singular power of its three liquid fuel main engines, draining a half a ton of fuel per second from the large fuel tank. Discovery 52 miles in altitude, 100 miles downrange, three and a half minutes into the flight. We're coming up on the point of negative return, where the shuttle would be too far downrange, too high in altitude to return to the launch site in the event of an engine failure. All three main engines continue to function normally, however. Three minutes, 47 seconds into the flight. Discovery flying straight and true, speeding toward a date with the International Space Station on Monday. Discovery, Houston, negative return. Roger, negative return. All of Discovery systems in great shape. Four minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, Discovery 62 miles in altitude, picking up speed, 170 miles downrange, traveling 5,300 miles an hour. The environmental systems officer reports the activation of the flash evaporator system, providing cooling for Discovery's avionics and other systems until the time that the payload bay doors are open an hour and a half into the flight. Four minutes, 40 seconds into the mission. All the main engines right down the money, in good shape, good performance, good auxiliary power units, good fuel cells. Discovery traveling 6,000 miles an hour, 66 miles in altitude, 230 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Five minutes into the flight, three and a half minutes of powered flight remaining. Very quiet here in the flight control room. Discovery Houston, press to ATO, select Istris. Roger, press to ATO, we'll select Istris. That call acknowledged by uh, Commander Mark Kelly, indicating that uh, in the event of a loss of a main engine, we could still make our abort to orbit targets. However, all three main engines continue to function normally. The orbiter will soon begin to roll to a heads-up position. Now beginning that roll to heads-up, the main engine's now swiveling. The shuttle rolling to its position above the fuel tank, gaining more favorable communications to the tracking and data relay satellite system as it heads uphill. Six minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, Discovery traveling almost 10,000 miles an hour, 397 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Your shutdown plan is nominal, and your go for the plus X, go for the pitch. Copy that, Terry. Copy the boundary. Nominal shutdown plan. Go for the plus X, go for the pitch. Good read back, and you are pressed to Miko. Roger. Pressed to Miko. 
press to main engine cutoff call by Commander Mark Kelly indicating should we lose a main engine, we can still make our nominal main engine cutoff targets. However, all three main engines hang in perfectly, as well as the auxiliary power units and the fuel cells at the seven-minute mark into the flight. Discovery now 515 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, traveling 11,000 miles an hour. Very soon, the main engines will once again be throttled down to limit the stress on the shuttle and its seven crew members to that of three times the effect of gravity. Houston, single engine press 104. Roger. Single 